Hello, my name is Barbara Njau. I'm the Senior Reporter and Markets Editor for Foreign Direct Investment Magazine, which is part of the Financial Times uh, division. And today I am at the IMF uh, meetings in Washington, and I'm joined here by the Honorable uh, Minister of Finance of Uganda, Maria Chiwanuka. Uh, she'll be talking to me today about Uganda, its F FDR strategy, as well as what the key takeaways from the IMF meetings will be today. So thank you, uh, your Honourable Minister, for joining me today. Uh, my first question is, how would you characterise the current state of Uganda's economy and what is your outlook for the coming year? Okay. Well, I'd say Uganda's economy is almost fully recovered from the economic and financial buffeting of the last two years. And uh, as for the outlook, I think it's very promising. Uh, this last financial year, which ended in June, we're already back to 5.8% growth annually, which was which is almost six percent, like the six percent we had before the financial and economic crisis. Uh, things appear to be looking up for Uganda. So earlier last month, the uh, central bank governor, who actually recently won an award um, from the African Investment uh, publication, African Investor, uh, he mentioned that Uganda's sovereign rating has been improving. So according to Fitch ratings, the credit rating is now B grade. So. What's your opinion um, on this? What is driving this renewed confidence, particularly from international sovereign ratings agencies on Uganda? Actually, actually Fitch is, is B plus, and I think we're one of only five countries in Africa that have that. Um, I think the rating is due to the fact that Uganda has been very, very disciplined in our, in our fiscal stance. Uh, we have not rushed out to borrow just because we can. Uh, we've had so many offers from people wanting to cash in on our oil, mm -hmm. newly discovered oil reserves, and and be, and also because we have a lot of infrastructure needs, but we've been very prudent, we've been very cautious, and trying to pay our way as we go. So I think that is why uh, we got we got that very uh, nod of approval. So it's interesting that the Africa Development Bank, in its recent uh, outlook report, mm -hmm. actually said that Uganda last year had uh, recorded its lowest growth in over a decade of about 4.4% last year. So what are some of the issues that you've seen? Is, under, is Uganda underperforming as a whole? Um, what does it lag in and what are the holes in its uh, economic growth that need to be plugged? Okay. Uh, first of all, clarification. Last year we did grow at our lowest rate in over a decade, but it was 5.8, mm -hmm. like I said, uh, as, as opposed to, um, no, we grew at 3.5 in the year of the financial and economic crisis. But since then, we've rebounded, like I said, to 5.8 last year. Uh, so I think ADB is going to update its figures with the, with, with the new material that's available. Uh, what, well, what is re driving the renewed confidence? I think it's because we have shown that we are resilient. Uh, the Americans have a saying, it's no, you, you're never successful until you've been down and then got up again. So we, we were down a bit, we've got up again. Uh, we've shown we're resilient, we've shown we're fiscally prudent. And I think we have shown, we have gone out and stated very clearly what our competitive advantages are, what our productive uh, uh, strong points are in agriculture uh, to become the breadbasket of East Africa and in um, our using our geographical position in the middle of East Africa to say we're not landlocked, we're landlinked and we're the distribution hub for Southern Sudan, uh, Eastern DRC, Rwanda and Burundi which are further to the hinterland from us. So what are some of the holes that you have identified uh, that need to still be worked on or rather need to be plugged mm -hmm. to make sure that Uganda stays on its growth trajectory? The first hole, big one, is inf the infrastructure gap. Uh, we have a gap in road maintenance, we have a gap in uh, uh, modernization of the railway and in the waterways. We share Lake Victoria, which is the second biggest lake in the world, but has very little traffic, so we're working on our infrastructure in road, rail, and water. Uh, those are the big investments we're making. We're rolling out our power across the land because access to power still needs to be improved if we're going to do an agro, agro processing revolution. And our agricultural productivity has to come up because we've got the same amount of land, but for more and more people. And if we're going to realize our aim to be the regional export basket of uh, East Africa. We need to make sure that each, each, acre, each acre of land, if you like, produces more and at a higher value added. 
That way we'll get both the export drive, we'll get the value added and jobs for our people. And uh, AFDB expects that next year uh, Uganda will grow in excess of 5%. Uh, how confident are you about Uganda hitting this target, number one? And also, what are your plans as the finance minister to make sure that the country's microeconomic house is in order? I fully hope to hit uh, more than 5%, 6% uh, at least. And uh, we're doing this by focusing on those areas where we feel the private sector needs assistance in order to, to hit the target because we are fully aware the private sector is 80% of our economy and they are the people we look forward to to produce the growth. So like I said, we're repairing the roads. We've got a very ambitious road program. We're rolling out the power. Last year we rolled out over 2,000 kilometers worth of transmission line. We have just secured uh, 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 preferential financing for two big hydroelectric dams, which will double our, our electricity capacity. And we're developing a port on, east, on Lake Victoria. So, that's, so that will help the cost of transport come down. And then we're looking at, um, like I said, the energy to, to help the agro-processing uh, industries rise up. But at the back of all this, we never forget that we must keep our macroeconomic stability. That is the framework, if you like, to keep inflation down, to keep our foreign exchange um, rates uh, stable, to give the investor the predict predictability that they want. For the rest, I'm going by a survey we've done and which is similar to what's been done in the rest of Africa. The four biggest needs of an investor, local or foreign, is reliable power supply, reliable not necessarily cheap but reliable, uh, all weather roads, piped water availability at, at one's uh, workplace, and a skilled workforce. So infrastructure, uh, human resource development, and, at, and of course at the, at the back of it all, the, uh, the macroeconomic stability. Okay, so FDI Markets, which is uh, the specialist database uh, which is affiliated with Foreign Direct Investment and it looks at Greenfield uh, FDI, has shown that the cross-border investments and the FDI that's been going into Uganda has actually been quite resilient. Mm -hmm. So um, last year about 570 million worth of Greenfield investments was recorded. So it's interesting to note when, I, when you look at uh, where the FDI is going to, financial services actually performed very robustly, uh, which is interesting because when you look at the news reports today, it's all talk about oil. Mm. So I'd be interested to know how diversified is Uganda's economy and what are some of the sectors that you see performing well? Yes, yeah, so over the last three years, the services sector, uh, especially the financial sector and the telecom sector, have been very robust and have recorded a lot of growth from, you know, from a small base. But from now going forward, we're looking more to the productive sectors, to agriculture and the oil sector. Uh, we've been through a very careful process of you know, uh, exploration and bringing in uh, oil companies as partners. And now finally, we're entering the production for our phase and with the production phase there's going to be a whole new development in the in western Uganda where the oil fields are as more and more of the fields come into production but uh, we're not going to base ourselves on just oil because oil will never be the majority part of our economy it's just part of the economy and we're going to use that to step up agriculture opportunities, agro-processing and training for our people so they can be the welders, the carpenters, electricians, all these skills that you need in a modernized economy. So human resource development, uh, oil production, yes, and agriculture. That's where we, we're looking for most of the growth to come from. Uh, next in the years going forward. So the oil story is still nonetheless quite important. Mm. So how is Uganda working to avoid the so-called oil curse? And uh, when do you expect the oil to start coming on stream? Okay, well, I think, I mean, I'm the Minister of Finance, not the Minister of Energy, but I think it should be coming on stream in the next three or four years. Mm -hmm. But uh, how are we going to avoid the oil curse? By making sure that we use our oil revenues to fund the infrastructure gap that, that, I've, that I've mentioned. Um, in that way, we'll make sure that the depletable black gold under the ground will, be, will help finance the 
green gold above ground that is sustainable, the agriculture and agro-processing. So being that we have a fairly young population, we are not going to put it in pensions or cash transfers as some other countries have done. We're going to put it into putting in place the infrastructure that our young people and the people after them will use to, uh, to as, a, as, a, as a framework for f finding employment. So uh, one of the things that I'd be very tempted, I was mm. tempted to ask was uh, with regards to the World Bank. So we're having this interview mm. here. And they ranked uh, in its doing business environment, uh, Uganda is number 120 mm. uh, globally. So do you agree with this assessment? Do you think this is a fair assessment of Uganda's doing business environment? Yeah, well, I've heard about the report. I haven't had time to read it yet. But what I do know is the reports are always a point in time and not a period. Uh, if it was done at a time when we're still sorting out uh, a lot of issues that we have uh, sorted out, I would say, I'd say maybe, but I prefer to go according to the reception we've received at the, from the World Bank and the IMF and from the investors and being invited to uh, speak uh, or to your, to, your, to your media. I think Uganda is going to be a very good place to do business in, in the coming years. Like I said, we've got the macroeconomic framework. We're sorting out our business licensing regime. We're f filling our infrastructure gap. We're doing everything that we see is needed by the private sector for them to get on with the, with the job of, of providing the growth. So finally, um, a lot of global investors are keeping close watch on Uganda, primarily because of what's happening in the oil sector, but also what's happening in the wider Africa rising narrative. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the key takeaways that you would like to impart at these, uh, this year's IMF conference with regards to Uganda? Okay, um, well, very briefly, because I'm sure you don't have that much time, I'll summarize what I've been saying to investors and to the multilaterals and the bilaterals here. Uganda is open for business in a win-win uh, context. There's opportunity for local and private investors. The government is willing to and uh, determined to do everything it should do to provide the public goods, the infrastructure, the skilling of our people, the macroeconomic stability, the licensing reforms. And given our agriculture advantage, we have two growing seasons a year. We, the East Africa has a market of 150 million people who all do buy food from Uganda. We're geographically at the center of East Africa with links to South Sudan and, uh, and uh, DRC for distribution of, of, of goods and services. Uh, uh, the future's bright. Come on in.